Hey, Garrett here with a, another episode of the Startup 360 podcast, uh, where we interview uh, founders of startups on a 360 camera. So you can watch the video on a VR headset and get the full immersive experience. Please make sure you uh, like us and subscribe to us on YouTube. And you can also get a hold of me by emailing me at Garrett at Startup360Podcast.com or giving me a call at 734 734- Two seven four nine five two one. So today I have uh, James Murtha and Gina Adams of Wearology, and we're going to be talking about buttons to buttons. And uh, oh, also we have Phoenix down here as well. Phoenix, so, there he is. Awesome. <laughs> hey, buddy. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep now. Okay. Exciting interview. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so let's so let's let's talk. What is buttons to buttons and how, how did things kind of get started? So thank you for this opportunity. It's great to be here. Um, I'm Gina Adams, the CEO and founder of Wearology, and this is James. Hey. Yeah, and I, uh, I'm the chief innovation officer, so I am over like product innovation, like product ideas and development. And uh, you know, we're a small group right now. We're yeah. a small troop, so we all wear a lot of hats. And uh, so, you know, I help with, like, networking, making contacts, and recently uh, hel- uh, helped Gina with a pitch competition, and, uh, yeah. Cool. So, when did, so you said, so you, you kind of started this, and we were kind of talking about it. Uh, yeah, I recently um, graduated from Wayne State with my MBA, mm-hmm. and through that process, I was able to develop our business and conduct our customer discovery work, and really determine whether or not there was a need for people experiencing, um, whether it's hand disabilities or, um, you know, regardless the cause. Mm -hmm. For me personally, it was witnessing the impacts of Parkinson's on my stepdad. And he, you know, was this brilliant PhD engineer, uh, guitar player, and as the Parkinson's progressed, he was, um, became more and more dependent on my mom as a caretaker. So that was kind of... You know, my background is in the apparel industry, and so while I was getting my MBA, I started talking to some professors and uh, just decided, you know, perhaps there um, is an opportunity to help people with their clothes, um, to help regain levels of independence. Um, So that's kind of where we started from. Cool. And with your stepdad, what, I guess, like, I see as you're watching him needing more help, what were kind of some things that you were noticing that maybe people that don't have those issues don't even think about well um things like brushing your teeth for instance there are they're referred to as activities of daily living Mm -hmm. and for things that i certainly take for granted you know i'll brush my teeth while i'm you know getting dressed or you know like but if you have parkinson's or maybe if you've suffered from a stroke it takes twice as long to accomplish any of these activities um particularly um, getting dressed for over 30 million people is actually impossible. They have to rely on a caretaker or they're prohibited in what they can wear. And so, um, you know, watching my stepdad, because he was this brilliant man, it wasn't just the physical impact, but it was that emotional toll mm-hmm. when he couldn't take care of himself, you know, as an adult. It's yeah. just something that, you know, we do kind of take for granted until we're in that position. Absolutely. So... Now, the, f- the first product is buttons to button, and James, you're wearing them right mm-hmm. now. Can, so, do you mind kind of showing us and then talking about how that idea specifically yeah, sure. kind of came into being? Um, yeah, so, um, well, just to reiterate what Gina was saying, like, when you have me, myself, like, I had a spinal cord injury four years ago when I was mountain biking in Colorado. And um, so I have uh, what's called C5 quadriplegia. C5 quadriplegia, which basically means that, you know, I can't move my legs and I have minimal use of my arms and, like, no use of my... uh, I don't have the ability to use my hands and, like, I can, like, twist my wrists outward, but I can't, like, curl them back. Okay. So... I uh, have to wear these braces to keep, or I wear these braces to keep my hands rigid so that I'm able to, like, you know, use them to, like, 
push like elevator buttons and stuff. Otherwise, like my hand would just be like flopping down like that. Gotcha. So yeah, well, long long story short, go back to like Gina's point. Like, it takes you when you have a disability, especially one like mine, like doing things like dressing or just you know using your phone, or, like doing anything, eating. Like it can take so much longer to do if you're doing it on your own. So any kind of advantage that you can, like any kind of like adaptation that you can utilize just mm-hmm. like shaves off like, you know, minutes to like hours, you know, cumulatively mm-hmm. of your day. So like having like a product like this is like, you know, it's just another one of those tools that can help take a little bit of frustration out of your day and like make things a little smoother. Cool. Yeah. And James lives independently, which is really impressive, and that's kind of how this idea of wearology came about, because we realized that, you know, it's not just getting dressed. There are so many other um, essentials that people could use, and James has developed a bunch of um, accessories, like manipulated them to help him, you know, live independently. And so we see a really great opportunity to take those ideas and develop them so that other people can benefit. Yeah, like everything from like getting out of the door of your apartment or picking up dropped items. Like, I mean, I can't use one of those reachers mm-hmm. and because um, I can't squeeze my fingers together. And so the and also, you know, having there are electronic doors that you can get installed in your homes that, you know, you push the button and it opens the door for you. But those are, you know, they're expensive and they may break. So, you know, just coming up with uh, more cost effective solutions to that, like, and other issues is like the goal that we're striving for. Awesome. So, so those buttons are magnetic, right? And you, like, how do, so are you taking your old buttons off? Like when, so like when you buy a shirt and you're going to put on your, the buttons to button. Yeah, Gina's got a a few demonstrations in her bag. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I guess I can grab these first. So, they're sold in sets of 10, or you can buy a three pack or a 10 pack set and convert your entire wardrobe. But the idea is that um, you just retrofit your own clothes. And so- You're wearing them too. Yeah, so people, it's, um, so there's one cap that goes over your buttons. Yep. And then the other yeah, part. Has the magnet inside of it. Yeah, and then the other part, um, we designed those so that they look like a fake button, but we're basically flip flopping your lapels, if that makes sense. So now um, you can just attach that. I don't know if you can see this to your buttonhole. Yeah. So there's like and a so little. There's like a little metal. Sure, sure, there's a little circular metal surface with a stem in the middle of it, and the stem goes through the hole in the shirt, and then a fake button clasp onto it and so and, our yeah. and then it's like easy pull apart snapshot yeah. together and most importantly it's machine washable so they do have to be installed by a caretaker somebody that has some dexterity yeah but once they're installed they're machine washable and it's an affordable solution to you know retrofit your own clothes um, so that you can wear them and That's another great. another advantage that I've found with wearing them is that like Gina said, I spend most hours of the day alone on my own. Mm-hmm. And so when I'm out and about in the summertime, you know, some, t- some days, like, it gets hot during the day and I need, like, you know, to, like, you know, air out a little bit and cool down so I can, like, pull this open when I need you yeah. know, to air out. And then at night when it, when it gets cold again or if it gets windy out later, like, I can, you know, snap it back shut. So... For me, like, you know, it's another way of thermal regulating myself and just getting through the day. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the first product that you've made or have you, what other, and then I guess, are you making others currently or do you have ideas that you can talk about coming down the pipeline maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like right now we're focusing primarily on the buttons just because we're such a small team that Mm -hmm. we need to focus our energy intently yep but once these buttons take off we have ideas for um, adaptive gloves we have ideas for like I said some kind of a retrieval like snare object for getting dropped items items to help get the 
get the doors open like to your home uh, like I've come up like I've been thinking of ideas for getting in and out of a pool without like a specialized lift that you know most hotels don't have yeah and most you know people like me can't always use because they're like mostly meant for people with like arm control yeah and also another problem is getting in and out of beds at hotels because hotel beds even in the ADA rooms tend to be at least like six six inches to a foot taller than what you like the level that you're sitting at if you're in a manual wheelchair yeah luckily my chair has the ability to like raise up and down so my parents or whoever I'm traveling with can just like slide me into the bed after I lift up but if like I didn't have that feature they'd have to like physically lift me up so like having like some kind of like portable practical and affordable lift lift to travel with would be another idea that I want to pursue cool Awesome. There's so, also like another natural, um, with the buttons, a lot of people said, oh, are you going to offer different colorways so that people can actually yeah, embellish their shirts? So, um, and then there's mm-hmm. another natural extension into pants because a lot of people want to wear jeans, yep. but that's not always um, an opportunity and people are kind of restricted to wearing sweatpants. So we're hoping to, you know, we have a pant um, adapter being developed now. And then possibly um, a bra attachment as well, because a lot of people um, unfortunately have restrictions. And again, if you can't lift your hands up, t-shirts aren't necessarily the option, and a lot of people can't do this for um, yeah. putting on undergarments either. So absolutely, that's the, uh, so it's really exciting. I think this um, I love this, and I love hearing about it. So thanks. Um, let's so let's talk about your your Kickstarter and how we're launching. Um, so you did a Kickstarter. How'd that go? Mm-hmm. We did. Um, it was a great experience. It was a little nerve wracking and it was educational. We learned a lot. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm calling it a fabulous, massive success mm-hmm. because through the promotions that we were able to generate, mm-hmm. um, we had a nice um, feature on Fox News. And a local injection mold supplier reached out to us and said, hey, um, the the campaign was to raise funds yep. for our first set of 1,000 sets of inventory. Yep. And so this injection molder called E-Tech Plastics. Thank you, Jerry. He um, offered to produce our first 1,000 sets for free. Oh, that's so, awesome. Which is mm-hmm. huge. So that was our whole goal. Yeah, so we reached our goal. And then online, um, it definitely took... Um, a lot more um, just work than I had anticipated. We did spend three months building up our web presence and social media and gained about 14,000 followers on Facebook. So we were really excited about that and we felt like we were kind of prepared for the launch because people were excited and they were sharing our information. But there wasn't a lot of conversion, which is a common term in um, the business world of like it's great that people are looking but you want people to convert and actually purchase your product yeah. now we were taking pre-orders okay. so that we can deliver the um, product by November is our goal okay I think we've promised people December but you know hope we're hoping to um, over deliver right and yeah. exceed their expectations but um, that conversion piece has been really challenging and I'm not sure um, you know we, we haven't really pinpointed why but I will say that it was our through our personal connections and our personal email listings that we had um, piled together and friends and family really pulled through to help us meet our goal our goal was 65,000 excuse me 6,500 6,500 okay (laughs) I wish we would have made 65,000 but we did um, meet our goal which at the end of the Mm -hmm. day so we won kind of on both fronts nice awesome and led to a lot of great contacts too Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, no, go ahead, please. Yeah, like, I mean, Gina mentioned that we got interviewed by Fox 2 News Detroit. Uh, She also got interviewed by uh, ABC Detroit. Um, And also the Good Morning America's, like, online presence did a feature. Um, And then we were also featured in the disability community by New Mobility Magazine, which is, like, basically, like, the wheelchair users, like, go to like for information and Great. it's it's fo- it's sponsored by the United Spinal Association which is based out of New York and it's big in 
you know, my community. And uh, then we also got featured in another um, prevalent online blog for people with disabilities called uh, Cure Nation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and so we made, like, you know, awesome connections through that. That's just, like, naming a few. So just, like, that was, like, you know, another secondary benefit of what we did. It really gave us a national presence that we hadn't had yet, so yep. it's really exciting to see yes. orders coming in from Texas and New Mexico yes. and um, versus just Michigan, so yeah, it's a absolutely. nice way for us to um, get the word out. So that's cool. So, so Kickstarter, obviously you hit your goal, but it obviously would have loved to have sold a whole lot more, but it seems to have kind of almost been like the beginning of a marketing campaign where you're still having more orders coming in now for your pre-orders, like, mm-hmm. kind of like the second launch of a Kickstarter, even though it's probably not a Kickstarter. Or right, right. I mean, it was the impetus for us to get out there and promote yeah. us, and if, you know, we went to, like, an arthritis walk, we went mm-hmm. to a scleroderma walk, um, really trying to get face-to-face with people so that they understand, because um, the sales part of it is... You know, people are, they meet you with apprehension, of course, because we are bombarded by over like 2,000 advertisements a day. And so I get people being cautious, but Mm -hmm. then once they can kind of see our product and get that we are a social mission venture, they're like, oh, that's great. I'm like, it is great. Um, Thanks for your support. So It's hard to sell a product when you don't have a physical product other than like our own prototypes to yeah. show them and so like that's you know that was the other challenge and like Gina was saying like you know we're all bombarded today with like hundreds of emails texts like phone calls like to do's you know you know it, like you know you name it and it's just you know today like more than ever you, you gotta like be skilled at getting people's attention and that's yep. always a challenge for everybody mm-hmm. so in terms of fundraising then are you thinking about bringing in like outside investment like uh, angel investors we are looking things. at yeah. um, some investment opportunities you know we've been pitching at different competitions to over you know to cover some of our overhead because a physical product has been extremely expensive in product yep. development um, it's much different than a service yep. um, and so uh, you know I was really shocked for example our first set of eight buttons was almost six hundred dollars because wow. they had to, you know, three D print um, not only the metal component but the it, it's just insane how expensive it is. You know, we've been able to really search broadly and find some yeah. great partners. Um, we are part of the Centropolis Accelerator Program, which is a Lawrence Tech University physical product incubator. And then of course there's been help from Wayne State, but really it's the pitch competitions and like organizations like uh, Michigan Women Forward where we've won and those funds have just helped us keep going. So on our website, we are accepting pledges as well as pre-orders. Okay. Um, for those generous souls that want to help us get, awesome. <laughs> get over this hump. And your and your website's buttons to button.com. It is. It's mm-hmm. on the whiteboard and it'll be in the show notes as well, but please go there. Um, and how much are you hoping to raise with if you were to bring in uh, outside investment? What's the goal? Our initial goal is 350,000. Okay. And that's just to cover our first set of inventory um, for mass um, sales as well as our marketing costs because okay. with a new product like this um, there's a lot of education mm-hmm. people they're like oh you're selling shirts no we're selling an accessory so you can wear your shirt and it's it's until you see it people don't really mm-hmm. understand it and yeah. I was surprised at how expensive online marketing is um, you know whether that's through Google Ads or even Facebook yep. um, which we know that people with disabilities really spend um, a considerable time on social media platforms because mm-hmm. it's a great source of information for yeah. people to share. So And just on the internet in general. Mm-hmm. Like people with disabilities spend like, you know, quite a bit of time on the, some people do like on the internet. Just because yeah. like some people like don't have many options. So like all they can do is like, you know, be on their phone or on their computer. Yeah, uh, definitely makes sense. And how many, so I guess, uh, how many buttons 
or packages do you think that investment would make and how many have you sold already? <laughs> right. Um, well, we've acquired our first hundred customers, so we're excited about that. And um, the startup funding will cover our first 10,000 sets of inventory. Um, and that's, you know, we're looking at not only selling through online retail space and as well as our own website, but also to um, like rehab facilities or in-home care providers yep. or senior living facilities where, you know, we have an aging population. 10,000 people reach retirement age every day. Yep. And so, and you know, these are professionals that take pride in appearance, of course, as well as independence. And yep. so we're hoping that um, through some of these outlets that we'll be able to sell in um, larger volume. Beautiful. That's awesome. So um, what has uh, kind of been one thing that's maybe surprised you as you've started this process and gone through making buttons, promoting them that maybe you wouldn't have foreseen? Just all the steps, like all the steps that there is to running a business. Like, I mean, this is like Gina's been in business for 20 years in the clothing industry. And so she's, you know, been exposed to it. But for me, this was like my first go at this. And, you know, you take for granted, like what it takes to bring a product from idea, from an idea to the customer's hand. Like there's the like Gene was saying, like it's, you know, the, the, the actual like raw materials for the product and mm -hmm. each and every individual raw material. Like we had to learn about magnets and like different pull forces and like, you know, that magnets like lose their, lose their magnetism at a certain heat. So like we couldn't mold like, you know, the plastic with the magnet at just any temperature. So like we've struggled with that. Like you know, finding the right material plastics, finding the right metals, and, like, then it's finding the right packaging, finding the, ad, like, advertisers, the marketing steps. Um, and, you know, and then there's, like, the funds, you know, getting the money to do this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it costs money to work with these companies. And so, like, that's been, that's been, like, my big learning experience with this or being, like, you know, a uh, very green entrepreneur. So, mm -hmm. what are you? Yeah, it's been a constant juggle between the product development, the business development, and the fundraising. And they're all mm -hmm. critical, they're all dependent on one another. Yeah. And um, it's interesting how each day we, we're making milestones and, you know, it's exciting, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like, okay, I have to fill out these applications. You know, it's basically deadlines. I'm like, okay, what do I need to finish tomorrow to meet our deadlines, so that we are able to, um, you know, again, a pitch pitch competitions are great, and mm -hmm. they've helped us really bootstrap this entire yeah. process. Um, but they're not. It's not a guarantee, and that's why mm -hmm. I was hoping. You know, we've met so many people that have been impacted by, you know, whether it's an investor who has Parkinson's, who's like, oh my gosh, I love what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, you know, throw us a bone. And he's like, <laughs> well, let me introduce you to people. So, you know, it's really um, being mindful about your time mm -hmm. and not getting um, pulled into these rabbit holes that really don't turn out to be uh beneficial and mm -hmm. it's you know and we're trying to find relationships where you know we want to you know my, my publicist for instance she just read an article and she's like Gina I love what you're doing I want to help promote you and it's like well I can't afford you and she's like that's okay I'm going to do it because it's the right thing and so then of course I try and pay it forward and I've been promoting her to everybody that I meet yeah. who can afford her right yep. and so it's that paying it forward that really um makes this cycle work because you know of course well I would be happy to take a handout at the same time you know people have to pay bills people need a source of income yep. and so like how can we make this work so yeah it's it's fun it's exciting and fortunately I have James with you know just um, a great attitude and such a great support network and um, you know really keeps um, 
I don't know, it's like encourages me. It's like I know that what we're doing is going to help millions of people. So you know, why wouldn't we do this? So that's, that's cool. Yeah, because you so you you two were telling me too before we got on camera how you, obviously you were starting this, and then it seems like James kind of just kept pushing this idea. And I mean, you wanted it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. essentially what it is, right? Yeah, I want to use it. Um, and what what is what is that I guess what is your like working relationship been like through you know starting off basically as strangers and to now where you know co-founders and really working together on this company what has that been like well it's you know been a, a gradual process in some instance because um because you know like Gina was saying before we I don't know she start. She was telling you before we started filming. Her and I met when she was meeting different people with disabilities and asking them, "What what do you do to get by with your day? And mm-hmm. what could you use? What you know? What could you have that would make your day easier? Like, what do you need to like you know be more efficient?" And so we met through a mutual friend, um, like two two and a half years ago through that and um and then a year later I contacted her last summer and was like hey you got these buttons yeah like I wanted like to hear like what she was up to because like I was excited to hear like what you know what she had come up with from our interaction because I had told her about some of my own hacks that I had made to like you know get through with you know staying warm in the winter time and so at first, uh, she told me about where she was at and said she uh, invited me to be um, like a advisor, like you know, advise on the product, and mm-hmm. um, and then as you know, I as we just like chatted back and forth more and more, she you know started inviting me to more things and and you know started saying like, hey, like what would you think about like you know doing more like of a hands on involvement you know rather than just advising and so you know think one thing led to another and then gradually through the last year like you know we've become more um you know involved in like a partnership with this process Mm -hmm. and the advantage of that crowdfunding campaign that we launched was that it really lit a fire under us to like get things going and get things moving like you know as soon as possible yeah and we've kept it going by setting the goal to launch our product um by christmas yeah by december and um so that's kept the fire going and so like it's really like our working relation has really taken off and we just like we get along pretty well with each other just from a personality standpoint because we both have july birthdays we both care about the june but well, we're, yeah, we're both cancers. We're both cancers. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. We're the same sign. We're gotcha. the same zodiac. Um, yeah. So we're both summer birthdays. Um, we adventurous. Both, we He's both, incredible. We both care about the. Uh, we both care about the environment, and we have some other things in common. Just you know, from a personality standpoint, and you know the fact that you know she had somebody who's in her life who was affected by a significant disability that affected you know everything Mm -hmm. and uh you know and I live that experience and so like we kind of share like it's an interesting dynamic because she has the perspective of somebody who's worked in the clothing industry and a family member of somebody with a disability and I have the perspective of somebody who lives with a disability so like you know, I think it's a really interesting dynamic that works. Cool. Did you want to add anything? Um, no, I just, James is super fun. And, you know, our team meetings, um, he graciously will host them at his awesome apartment here in Ann Arbor because they have great big spaces. And, um, you know, it may entail bringing a bottle of wine sometimes to our meetings and just, you know, really being 
comfortable with you know your team your your team is everything right yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and so I you know when we first started I basically included James in all correspondence so that he could understand understand both the marketing side as well as the product development side mm-hmm. and then I was like you choose I mean because we need help in both areas yep. and um, so you know definitely the product development is kind of where it is near and dear because he understands yeah. what's missing yep. um, but then he quickly understood, like, well, we need you on social media, too. So, you know, like... <laughs> like I said, like, yeah, like I said, when it's a small operation, <laughs> people have to wear a lot of hats. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. people have to put... Like, that's, um, like, I, a book I'm reading uh, right now um, talks about, like, you know, being a modern-day entrepreneur, you have to be flexible. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't expect to only specialize in one thing. If you want to make it as an entrepreneur today, you've got to be able to adapt and pick up new skills. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the other thing that works for, you know, me, like, you know, working with Gina as a team member, like, you know, not to butter you up, but, like, she is so darn tenacious. And, like, like she will, like, if we need, like, if we need to, like, find, like, when we're looking for raw materials and we're looking at, like, different you know types of like magnets and understanding like different pole forces and knowing like what kind of pole force we need and like you know that kind of stuff like she found a magnets expert out in out in uh, Denver Colorado and like got a crash course paid him to get a crash course and like you know the science of magnetics and like it was just like you know so many things that we didn't know like about magnets before that like you know like you know that she you know did the digging and persisting to like you know be able to find that information and like she does that like you know with all things for this business so it makes me trust her like it makes me believe that this thing will work because you know I know that I can count on her and that she's gonna you know fight and not quit on like what we gotta get that's awesome yeah. I know so many times it's like it's it's the journey right mm-hmm. and so because mm-hmm. the book I'm reading right now is um, Eckhart Tolle I pulled this out and it's about now and it's like when you are living in the moment and as long as you believe and you're doing the best that you can um, and persevere it, it makes life so much more enriching yeah Mm -hmm. and so you know there was a minute there doing that indiegogo campaign it wasn't a kickstarter but it's not it's all the same stuff essentially platforms you know i got i looked at my kids i have a 14 and a 16 year old and i was like i'm not having fun right now (laughs) this is no longer fun and they they're like come on mom you have the confidence you can do it and and it's true. It's like as, as soon as I kind of changed my reference and said, okay, no, look, what, you know, I know that our end goal is obtainable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, give me a yard of fabric and I could have whipped up a wedding dress for you. You know, sewing is definitely where my talents lie. Okay. Um, so a physical product, like James said, it just, it's taken so much additional research and product mm-hmm. development time where it's like, well, I want to be marketing and, you know, doing that. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's finding and pulling the right teams together. But I will say it on the entrepreneurial note that, the other thing I've learned is to be paying really close attention. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe, like, you meet people for specific reasons. And so, yeah. you know, it's so important to go to these networking gigs. And sometimes I'm so exhausted. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's such a fun space. You meet yeah. amazing people doing really cool things. Yeah. And even in the pitch competitions, I never look at the other people in that competition as, as like, a competitor. Yeah. Like, I feel like, you know, we are bootstrapping, we're in this together, and yeah. it's when you are sharing, like, oh, this is who I know, and, you know, sharing and pooling those ideas, it brings everybody up, because, you know, um, that women's first competition, I think there were over, I, I guess they selected 100 people, and then from that 100, 10 were selected to compete, gotcha. and I was fortunate enough to make it into the 100, Uh, But they're all social mission-based companies. So there's people doing incredible things here in 
uh, Southeast Michigan. And so, um, but just, you know, my, I guess, advice is to make sure that you're open to meeting as many people and keeping track of it. Now, maybe, and if you have a better solution than post-it notes, I'm trying to come up with a better way to organize, like, here's our marketing and here's our, you know, occupational therapist that we want to work with. And, yeah. You know, and it's so, I have a pretty uh, crazy um, contact list at this point, but it's awesome because yeah. people are amazing mm -hmm. and, and that's just what's, you know, kept us going, so... Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we need to get you a CRM. That's a, <laughs> spreadsheets. Uh, yes. Not gonna cut it. Anymore. That's right. That's right. In <laughs> fact, that's funny. You should mention that because I have a spreadsheet of different CRM options for us to yeah. use to keep this all organized. Yeah, and there are there are lots of free ones that I think work great. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So we'll we'll, we'll talk, talk after. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, I want to do it. Yeah. So. We should uh, get into the rapid fire uh, section. Do it. Um, so, okay. uh, first question is, what is your best habit? Uh, for me, it's positivity and like optimism, which like it definitely waxes and wanes. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, there's times like Gina was saying where you know this entrepreneurship stuff will beat you down and it will test you. Yeah. And like you have to believe in what you're behind like I never saw myself as a entrepreneur just because I like I you know I thought that was just like too difficult and too risky but like you know I believe like I believe in what we're doing and I like I think it's like gonna be like so amazing when it pans out that you know like part of you know being an entrepreneur one of my friends told me who went to Ross here in Michigan um, he said you know part of being an entrepreneur is just like outlasting you know kind of yourself like yeah <laughs> like we're not really competing against anybody just because like you know this is like a totally new thing but you know you just like part of the game is just lasting and just sticking it out so um like the positivity and persistence has helped helped carry me through this especially being a new entrepreneur and like having a lot to learn yeah like from product development to just business development and like that's what Gina's been really helpful with so cool what's your best habit your habit wow that was a really good one I was gonna say um I think uh my best habit is probably eating right and um having healthy self-care habits and self-care which mm -hmm. kind of ties into that um, positivity because I always believe in you know you should kill people with kindness and yeah. Um, you know, and being able and humble enough to share your vulnerabilities because yep. this is a really mm -hmm. difficult space. And so I'm not, you know, what I don't know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess I have finally reached this maturity level that I'm like, okay, with admitting that, like, yeah. I don't have to have this ego that says, oh yeah, I got it all, mm -hmm. I got it all figured out. Um, so it's like the adage that people appreciate authenticity. Yeah. Like, you know, like you can try to you know, save face and, like, you know, be stoic and be the, you know, tough person, but, like, you know, you, you nobody knows everything, like, everybody mm -hmm. needs help at something, like, you know, like, there's gonna come a time, so, like, being, you know, like she said, making yourself vulnerable, like, that's been, that's been, like, you know, another big thing to this learning experience. Yeah, I think that, though, it came but down to just accepting myself for who I am and being Definitely. proud of that person. And and uh, lots of yoga will really help <laughs> you reach that, I think. So. Cool. Awesome. So next question is, what are you bad at and how are you solving it? I am bad at um, organization, I will say. I mean, it's... It's fundamental. You have to be mm -hmm. organized. Yep. Um, but, and that's, you know, talking about like spreadsheets can only get you so far. And so that's uh, between the, the, the organization part and really forcing myself to, uh, you know, when I meet somebody to stop, put the notes down, make sure that it's organized so that, um, you know, three months later I can find that person 
because yeah. maybe you meet somebody and you're not quite at that space yet in mm -hmm. your business where you could sell them a product, but now yeah. that we have the product to go back and schedule those meetings and that follow-up. So organization is just something that I constantly struggle with. Yeah. yeah, for me it's time management and saying no. Oh. Um, and for time management, just using calendars, uh -huh. using reminders, setting to-do lists, like making to-do lists and setting the reminders and adjusting as you need to. Um, and for saying no, like it's just, you know, finding out what you're good at and like, you know, just being like, I don't know, just doing it, just like the more you do it the easier it is like you know it's tough at first but like if you are like you know somebody who has that issue um but yeah just you know being persistent um next question is what is your advice for a high school graduate a college graduate and a 50 year old all right for a high school gra high school graduate i would say write your goals down on paper and like like pick as many as you want like it can be like 10 it can be a hundred but just write them down and dream big like there's so many possibilities out there and uh for a college graduate um learn like you know take everything that you learned in college and uh appreciate the whatever you studied appreciate the fact that you were hopefully learning how to learn and yeah. if you don't then start learning how to learn because that was like part of my process like I had to learn how to you know take in all this influx of over information that we're all saturated with and I had to learn how to take the most trusted sources and then you know learn how to like dig through those sources and ask the right questions you know how yeah. to find the information that I need not get buried in minutia and then to 50 year olds I would say you know the world has enough negativity out there as it is so you know if you're a little jaded or if you just like have like a pessimistic disposition keep it to yourself or at best like use it constructively like be be an educator like you know carry the torch for somebody else like don't use the woes of you know your existence as like a outlet or as mm -hmm. venting but like use it as a way to like teach people how like you know how they can avoid some of the pitfalls that you've hit so positivity cool how about you those are good those are really good i do think that um if you've ever watched the movie buttons um uh, uh benjamin button okay okay yep. where you start old and you grow young um there's so much i think wisdom to that because i do feel like um, i'm almost 50 and i do feel like people i meet tend to be a bit of a glass is half empty lately um and it kind of goes back to you know this is the one life we have and so mm. by focusing on you know your current situation and you know we're all faced with challenges but I think those challenges is what makes us um, unique individuals, but it also makes us a hell of a lot stronger as well. Um, so, yeah, I guess I, I, I would say for 50-year-olds, I would just suggest being more mindful of, you know, communicating and understanding um, and just appreciating life a little bit more. Maybe yeah. not taking things so seriously. <laughs> um, I get advice uh, from one of my advisors that you know I need to act like a CEO. I'm like, well, what does that look like? You know, there's there's millions of people here. Like, you know, mm. what does that exactly look like? And so, um, I don't like that advice. Yeah, I was like, well, it depends on you know. It's, I'm the CEO that I am, and um, yeah. I do I do love life, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, and then for college students. Um, I went to Michigan State, which was awesome, and I loved college. Um, and I think that, um, like, to connect with what James is talking about, you know, it's it's not a means to an end. It's you know, building and using these classes to really expand and grow as an individual, mm -hmm. and um, and figure out what it is and what your purpose is. I mean, finding out life's purpose is a pretty big obstacle or goal. Yeah. Um, and when you do, it's 
amazing. So, um, you know, don't limit yourself, but um, really, you know, don't take the class because it starts at 10, because those eight o'clock classes were very difficult for me in college, but, you know, <laughs> take it for, you know, what the class is offering and, yeah. and who you want to be as a person. And then for high schoolers, um, it's, almost, you know, I have a high schooler. She's in 11th grade. And so there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I feel like high schoolers take things so seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe that's in general. I feel like people are taking life a little too seriously. Yep. And do. that could be, you know, we didn't have social media when I was growing up. And so, um, I mean, I think people, instead of it being where it could be, and in some cases, of course, it's super positive and it's yep. a way for people to share information. But I think it's making people really self-conscious and and losing confidence in mm -hmm. themselves or thinking like, oh, I should be doing more. And so maybe it goes back to what James is saying, like make a list and what, you know, what is it that you want to do? Um, and so, and then just be your best individual. Cool. Awesome. Um, the next question I have is, actually, I'm trying to think. Huh. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but. <laughs> Um, oh yeah. Who's been the kindest person in your life? Uh, for me, for a lot of, like, you know, for much of my life, um, it's been my mom. And, uh, and after I, after I had my spinal cord injury, uh, the people I met were at the hospital where I did my physical rehab at, my inpatient rehab right after for four months. Uh, like the peop some of the people I met there were just incredible. Like it was an amazing environment, and like it was one of those environments where the people were there because they truly were passionate about helping people and wanted to be there. And it was just like I don't know, just like one of the most positive and like fun environments that I've been around. So a lot of them at Craig Hospital, um, and uh, that's all I got for right now. Um, I would say, you know, of course my mom um, is, you know, has been a great support, but not always the kindest. She had some tough love, you know, to make sure I was, you know, not leaving school to move out to Colorado, you know, when I was in college, and, you know, she's like, so it was good tough love, right? Yeah. But um, another, I think, huge person who influenced me was when I used to work for the North Face when I lived in Colorado, um, and I was a sales rep for a group there and so her name's Christy Gunter and she's you know like everybody's mom but she's also she was an incredible salesperson like she could have sold you a pair of used socks like yeah. just um, but she didn't do it again as like a used car salesman person she really taught me not only about um, it's selling yourself and creating mm -hmm. that trust yep. but she was the one that introduced me to organic foods and understanding you know the chemicals that we were eating yeah. and the importance of health and and um, you know and taking care of yourself like I just didn't yeah. it, health nutrition was not part of my studies in mm -hmm. school and, and it wasn't until later in life that I realized um, the impacts that it has on us and how important it is not only on us as consumers but of course the people that are growing the food yeah and um, really about 